Okay, today's challenge is to make a head-to-head -head racing robot. We are going to build a car and someone else is going to build a car and we're going to race them on the same track at the same time and we're going to try and do a lap before they do. They're going to start on opposite sides of the track and both cars are going to do one lap. We're going to see who can do it the fastest, who can get around that lap the fastest and then we might see if we can beat other cars as well. Here's some more rules and tips. everyone today we're going to do a head-to-head -head racer you're going to make a race car it's going to travel around the track we're going to see who can travel around the track the fastest against an opponent it's a good idea to try and stick to the middle as much as you can because the closer you are to the middle the less traveling you'll have to do so everyone's going to make right turns on this track today so we end up doing a clockwise lap of the track the first thing you always have to do when you make a vehicle is to set the movement motors. You can plug them into any ports you like. I often like to plug them into C and D. So just make sure that whatever you've written here ends up being the ports that you plug your motors into. And then you've got to set the speed. Now we know, some of you would know that it's good to make it a high, high speed or a fast speed, but you don't want to go above 100. Errors occur if you go above 100 and you really can't go faster than 100% anyway. Even if I said run a million percent as fast as you can, deep down you know you can only run 100%. So you can make that number any way you like and maybe it's good not to go too fast. I'm going to set to 80 to see how I go in my racing car. Then after you've set the speed you're going to start moving. Okay, this is going to be the first little stretch from the racing track start line to the first corner. And I recommend that you travel in seconds because seconds is easy to judge. And you might say, I'm going to go just for two seconds at the start. If it doesn't go quite far enough, you might say 2.1 seconds just to make it go far enough. You can decide how long that first stretch is. Every car will be different and even your track might be different to what I had. So... There's a lot of trial and error involved. You'll need to experiment. And I recommend that you experiment and test every single block you put down one at a time. So now, once you've got something like this, you add it to your robot, you download it to your robot, and you test it to see if you get close enough to that first corner. Remember, you should always start in the same position every single time. If you do that, then every time you test it, it'll be accurate and it won't be frustrating. If you keep starting at different spots, then you're gonna end up with a different result every time you test it. So remember, 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 always start in the same spot. After you've tested something like that, then you're gonna add some more turns. So this block here is a classic for turning and it will allow you to turn on a bit of a wide angle. 
as it's as you saw on my video my robot turned quite on a wide turn if you want a sharp turn like a spin you do something like that but i think for racing you don't want it to be spinning on the spot you can cover some ground as you turn if you have a turn about 30 or 40 or 50 but you don't want it to turn for 10 rotations for goodness sake again i recommend you do seconds and maybe even just turn for like 1.3 seconds or something like that again it's going to come down to your robot your robot's wheels might be wider than mine were or they might be more narrow your robot might be longer so you're going to have to decide how long you're going to turn for okay now after that first turn realistically you're going to have to do this about uh, four times so you could just duplicate that okay and duplicate it again and duplicate it again but i would test it okay if you found this turn was perfect then it might be cool uh, we're going to go forwards and we're going to turn and we're going to go forwards again but you know what you might want to go forwards longer than that you might say 2.3 seconds and then turn and we're going to duplicate often your turns if you get your turn right they might stay the same all the way through but you might need to tweak them a little bit that might be the big stretch the long stretch you might say i'm going to go for three seconds there okay and then i'm going to duplicate that i'm going to turn again i'm going to turn and go for 2.3 seconds again uh, or maybe 2.1 seconds who knows it's up to you you're going to have to experiment trial and error is the secret to success and duplicate that again and go wooshka it might be 2.3 this time it's up to you you're going to have to decide but you should end up probably with that many blocks because you probably will need to turn about four times to get around the track okay once on each corner so to speak remember always start on the same spot and be patient be kind don't get frustrated if you don't get frustrated you are a winner when you've made a full lap then race someone yeah let's do this so really all you need is some masking tape and maybe a piece of wood to go in the middle i just made a rectangle and that was about three meters by one and a half meters and um, just made it nice and parallel to a wall i used the wall as one of the sides of the track and then in the middle of the track i tried a piece of timber i just found some timber lying around and i put that in the middle and i thought yeah this little thin piece looks pretty good and I thought I might try some other pieces to see what looks good. And I tried a red piece, but I didn't think that was long enough. And I found one of my big planks, and I put the big plank on there. And that was really good. It really suited the um, layout of the track. So once the piece of timber's down in the middle, I'm thinking I need to put down a start line on both sides. And the best way to probably do it is just use the masking tape and come up with a straight line that goes right across the track. So ideally one car will start on one side and the other one will start on the other side and they'll both go clockwise around the track and we'll see which one can finish over the line first. I put a little bit of tape at each end of the plank so just in case it gets bumped or moved the kids could put the um, piece of timber back in the middle or you could use some tape underneath the timber or even Velcro. You would have received a file when you downloaded this video. There's also a uh, Word document that you can download that has a lesson plan and with the objectives and a procedure. So you can have a good look at that to help you run the lessons a bit better if you need it. And there's also options for scoring. So I've spent a lot of time over the years developing these uh, downloadable spreadsheets, which are basically uh, Google Sheets which you can fill out with student data and it will calculate winners and best times and that sort of thing. There is a link to all the spreadsheets and they all have an accompanying video which helps explain how to use the spreadsheet and get the most out of it. So check those out. You can just go file, make a copy of any of those and use them in your classroom and you can even assess some of the kids using those. Um, there's also uh, a student self-assessment sheet so the kids could actually fill this out at the end of the lesson and it's just a pretty much a tick box of 
how they think they went and that can be useful for assessment as well I mean there's quite a few things on here you can experiment with and play with and at the bottom there's some extension activity ideas so if you wanted to take the kids to another level uh, with their thinking and construction and programming that sort of thing you can look at those extension activities